Buccaneers and Colts get much needed wins. They're super close to securing a playoff spot. Chiefs hold on against the Dolphins. Dolphins show heart, but not enough. Bills take care of the Steelers. They are for reals. In the Premier League, Wolves lose again. Wolves lose to Aston Villa in the last minute. What is going on with the Wolves? Lackluster Manchester Derby. Not a lot of action, not a lot to talk about. Lackluster Manchester Derby. Chelsea loses a golden opportunity to go top of the table. They lose to Everton. Everton might be back. We'll see. This is Hard to Handle Sports, episode number 22. Thanks so much for being here. My name is Ismael San Juan. Let's get started. In week 14 of the NFL season, two key games that had a lot of playoff implication. Vikings versus Buccaneers, Raiders versus Colts. Vikings versus Buccaneers, I predicted that the Buccaneers would win. I thought they had the bye week. Brady's amazing after the bye week. Bruce Arians was going to make the right adjustments. I did not trust the Vikings. I did not trust Kirk Cousins, especially after the way they played last week against the Jacksonville Jaguars. And the Buccaneers were able to hold on for the victory, 26-14. to um, The game started off with the Vikings starting off hot, took the lead, missed extra point, and then they had a couple chances to extend the lead, couldn't get it done. Dan Bailey missed three field goals in the game and an extra point. I think that was the key to the game. Uh, the Vikings started off pretty good, but they couldn't build on their lead. They couldn't capitalize on the momentum that they had at the beginning of the game. That proved to be costly, especially when your kicker leaves 10 points on the board in a close game, 26 to 14. Um, after after they scored their second touchdown, they had to go for two points because they did not trust their kicker at all. Uh, they were actually the Vikings were actually able to run against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers rushing defense i thought they were going to be able to slow down dalvin cook but he had a pretty good game not an amazing game by his standard but he had a good game uh his average was good he looked strong he looked good but just missed opportunities by the vikings couldn't capitalize on their early momentum um at the beginning of the game brady looked a little shaky he missed gronk uh he had him pretty wide open going down the field he missed a couple of throws to evans i know there was one that i saw that he missed to godwin Godwin was doing like a 10 or 15 yard in, wide open, missed him. At the beginning of the game, it looked like it was going to be an, uh, it looked like the Vikings were in control. It looked like the Buccaneers might be a little, a little um, out of rhythm, out of their bye week. But like I said, the Vikings missed their opportunities to take the lead. They missed their opportunity to take control of the game. If they would have scored another touchdown when it was 6 0, they would have pushed that lead to 14 0. And it really put the Buccaneers out of their game plan. I think that would it would have gone a whole different way. But the Buccaneers were able to stay at it, stay at it. Um, Brady missed a couple of deep throws, and then he was able to hit one to Miller. And they just held on. The Buccaneers held on. This was a must win. This was a must win game for the Buccaneers if they would have lost after the bye week to the Minnesota Vikings, who were one spot behind them in the wild card positioning. It would have been terrible. The media would have killed them. Questions would have been asked, but they were able to hold on. Um, their defensive line had six sacks on the day, really sacked um, Kirk Cousins when they needed him most. When the game was 14-23, uh, the Vikings had a goal-to-goal situation. There was still enough time on the clock where they could make a comeback. And Kirk Cousins takes back-to-back sacks, pushes them all the way back to like the 25 or the 30-yard line. And then Dan Bailey misses another field goal. And that was pretty much it. Buccaneers get another field goal, extend the lead a two two possession game, or extend it to two touchdown a lead. And after that, it was it was done. Vikings couldn't get anything going. Uh, I think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers did a good job on Thielen. They did a good job good job on Jefferson. Um, Cook Cook got his yards, but like I said, the Vikings if if they're they're gonna lament this game because they had some opportunities at the beginning of the game to really take a commanding lead, really put the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in a tough position, make them throw their game script away, but they weren't able to capitalize. Dan Bailey, kickers continue to be a problem for the Minnesota Vikings. They can't seem to find a solid kicker. It seems like every season the Vikings are always in the market for a kicker. We're always talking about their kickers, and this season is another season where the Vikings can't find a quality kicker. So I think they really need to address that. I think the Vikings... This this loss kind of this is kind of it for the Vikings, especially because the Cardinals won 
and the Vikings have a tough schedule still remaining, or relatively tough schedule. Uh, the Vikings have the Bears, the Saints, and the Lions. They need, I think they need a win out to have a chance, and Bears just won today. Bears look um, pretty good since they've put uh, Mitch Trubisky back. It's crazy to say, but Mitch Trubisky's actually been playing pretty solid, so that's going to be a tough game for the Vikings. And then they play the Saints uh, with Drew Brees, should be back by then. Saints just lost to the Eagles today, so... You never know in the NFL any given Sunday, but uh, it's going to be tough for them to run the table, and then they're going to need results. So we'll see how they, they finish. But missed opportunity by the Vikings today. Um, like I said, they had chances in the beginning of the game to really put the Buccaneers in a tough spot. Unable to capitalize. More kicker problems. And that's it. That might be the season for the Vikings. They missed a golden opportunity. They would have won this game. They would have been tied with the Buccaneers 7-6. Seven, seven and six. They would have had the tiebreaker against the Buccaneers, head-to-head tiebreaker. Um, it could have been good for the Vikings. Unfortunately, they f- they fall short. Uh, they should still he- uh, he- hold their head high for the comeback they made this season. I had them out after like week five or six when they were like one and four. And for them to still be in a position to fight for a playoff spot uh, going into week 15, um, nothing to head- hold your head down. Uh Next next season, they just got to start out faster. They can't put themselves in that big of a hole. They still have a quality roster, but they should fix their offensive line because uh, Cousins has never been the most mobile guy. And they should also work on their defense, um, try to get more pass rushers. Try to, cause they didn't get a single sack today. They weren't able to pressure uh, Tom Brady. So I think the Minnesota Vikings should start looking f- towards next season. It's going to be real hard for them to make the playoffs this year. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers... Able to hold on, able to get a victory after the bye week, eight and five now. Uh, three games left. They play the Falcons twice and the Lions smacked in the middle. They should be able to get three victories, three out of three. Finish the season eleven and five. Go out back to the playoffs after a lot of years. And once they get in the playoffs, we'll see how they do. I don't think they match up well against a lot of the NFC teams, but anything can happen. Brady has never gone to a Super Bowl when he has to go away from home, so. Might be different this time because he Tampa Bay, but we'll see. Uh, must win victory for Buccaneers, and they get it done. I predicted they were going to win. They did win, so I'm happy to see that. Uh, and for the Vikings, maybe next year, uh, just start off. You can't put yourself in a big, this big of a hole and climb out of it. It's super, it's a, it's a tough spot to put yourself in. And just next year, fix the line, fix that defense, and you guys will have a shot. Uh, the second game that I had predicted before week 14 was the Colts versus the Raiders. Colts versus Raiders came in as the 7th and 8th seed in the NF- in the AFC. Uh, it, the, the, first, the first half was close, and then the, the Colts pulled away in the second half. Take away from this game, the Raiders won't be contenders till they fix their defense. Uh, I think Carr played good this today. Uh, you can't put the blame on him. He had a couple interceptions, but he, relative... Uh, to how the defense played, the offense played pretty good. Uh, I think this def- this this falls on the defense. Uh, it's going to be real hard for the Raiders to make the playoffs after losing this game. They have the Dolphins ahead of them. If the Ravens win, they're ahead of them, and they have uh, who's the th- who's the third team? They have the Dolphins, Ravens. That that might be it. I think that's just the three teams that are ahead of them. But after this loss to the Colts. Real tough, real tough for the Raiders. They have the Chargers next, so they should be able to get a victory and get back on winning. But win out, win the last three games, and they finish ten and six. But they do have, they do have the Raiders. They, have, they do have the Dolphins left, so that might whoever loses that game will for surely be uh, done. But the Raiders, they haven't looked that strong the last few weeks, especially after the loss to the Falcons. They just lost a lot of steam. Uh, if they would have been able to somehow pull up another upset against the Chiefs, we may be talking differently about them right now. They they might have carried that momentum from that victory, and they could be sitting way uh, higher in the standings. But they lost to the Chiefs. They lost to the Falcons. Squeaked out a, a win against the Jets and got beat pretty badly at home against the Colts. As far as the Colts, uh, Colts are starting to look like contenders. T.Y. Hilton is coming around. Uh, he finished with two touchdowns. Five receptions for 86 yards. He's looked. He's come alive the last three weeks. T.Y. Hilton's back. He he looks he looks healthy again. He, he's running fast. 
He's burning teams down the middle. He's coming back to live. They're going to need him in the playoffs. It does look like the Colts should make the playoffs now. And Jonathan Taylor, their rookie, looked amazing. Career high, 150 yards on 20 carries. He broke a long one. He look he looks fast. He looks he looks healthy. I know he had some injuries in the middle of the season. He missed some games because of COVID. And Phillip Rivers had another clean game, 244 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Defense played solid again. Uh, they held the Raiders to 20 points, and then they got a garbage garbage touchdown at the end. But uh, good game by the Colts. Um, it looked like it was going to be a shootout at the beginning. It looked like they were going to go head-to-head, but Colts were able to pull away in the second half. They were able to force turnovers. Uh, the Raiders had three turnovers. The Colts had zero turnovers. Uh, I think that was the key to the game. Colts were smart with the ball. They didn't give the ball away. Raiders had three turnovers. It's hard to beat a good team like the Colts when you have three turnovers and they don't turn the ball over. Uh, for the for the Colts, like I said, solid defense. Phillip Rivers is playing clean football. T.Y. Hilton's coming alive. You have Pittman. You have some two solid tight ends. You have like three solid running backs, Hines, Taylor, Wilkins. Colts, Colts, Colts might make some might make some noise when they get to the playoffs. If Phillip Rivers is could just play smart football, keep them in good down to down to go distances. And if he doesn't have turnovers, they have a nice squad where they can make some noise. That defense is good. Frank Wright is a great coach. He's not afraid to go for it on fourth downs. He puts pressure on the other teams. Phillip Rivers not throwing interceptions. Jonathan Taylor getting into form. T.Y. Hilton coming back, looking like a number one wide receiver. The Colts can make some noise when they get into the playoffs. And for the Raiders, fix that defense, fix that defense, and hold on to the football. It doesn't look like it's going to be this year. It doesn't look like the Raiders are going to punch a ticket to the to the playoffs this year. Unfortunate for the Raiders. I know there's a lot of Raider fans out there that were real hopeful for this season, especially the way they started, especially after upsetting the Chiefs. And I know there was a lot of optimism after losing a close game to the Chiefs the second time around, and that optimism is dwindling right now, losing to the Falcons, squeaking out a victory to the Jets, and losing at home to the Colts. Uh, unfortunate three games for the for the Raiders. Most 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 fans would have thought that they would have ran the table. They would have won all three games after playing the Chiefs so close. One and two in these two games kind of sinks them, kind of kills their hopes for this season. But they still have an outside shot, so we'll see if they're able to run the table, finish ten and six. And if they finish ten and six, that might be enough. But if they get to the playoffs with that defense, it, I don't see them progressing too too much. But Maybe it's all for the better. Maybe next season when there's fans, the Raiders could uh, end their playoff drought with the fan, with the fans there in Las Vegas supporting them. But for the time being, unfortunate how the Raiders have played the last few weeks and the Colts seem to be rounding into form. They're still tied with the Titans at 9-4 and four for the division lead. Titans still hold the tiebreaker, but now the Colts are in a real good position to at least get a wild card spot. And they might make some noise when they make the playoffs. I, I used to be a Charger fan when they were in San Diego, so I have some ties to Phillip Rivers. So I do wish him the best. I hope he goes far into the playoffs. He he, deserve, he deserves a good team, and now the Colts have put a great team around him. So we'll see how far the Colts could, do, could go. But it was a good game, especially in the first half when it was closer. Colts pulled away in the second half. Solid, solid game. And another game that I had predicted, uh, Dolphins versus Chiefs. Uh, I thought I thought it was gonna be a close game. I thought the Chiefs were gonna pull away in the second half, and uh, I, I think I predicted a 12 point victory by the by the Chiefs. It turned out to be closer. Uh, Chiefs beat the Dolphins 33 27, six point win by the Chiefs. Uh, the game was really close at the beginning. Uh, for the game, Mahomes had three interceptions. Super unc- uncharacteristic of him. He came into Week 14 with just two interceptions, both of them against the Raiders. So he had not thrown an interception to any other team. The Dolphins are great at creating turnovers, and they showed it again today, costing uh, three interceptions to Mahomes. At the beginning of the game, it looked like the Dolphins might run away with it. They had a 10-0 lead. Uh, the Dolphin, I mean, the Chiefs weren't finding their footing on the offensive side. It wasn't until Tyreek Hill had an end around, and he... I think he scored it from like 35 yards out. Tyreek Hill might be the best offensive weapon in the NFL. Wherever you put him in the slot, out out wide, 
doing end rounds during sweeps. He's a menace. Uh, that speed, you can't teach speed. That's one of the old sayings in, in sports and football. You can't teach speed. And Tyreek Hill might be the fastest man in the world with pads on. And even without pads, he might be up there uh, as one of the fastest men alive. He's a, he's an amazing weapon. Uh, I think the ter- the game really turned in the like in the middle quarters, in the third quarter especially. Uh, the Chiefs the the, Dolph- the Chiefs went on the run, and the Dolphins had uh, four possessions where they went three they went three and out three times, and two a uh, threw a pick in one of those. So that middle part of the game really got away from the from the Dolphins, but their Dolph- their defense was able to keep them in the game, intercepting uh, Xavier Howard. Uh, Savian Howard had another interception his fifth game in a row with the pick really impressive stuff for him he leads the NFL in interceptions one-handed catch highlight play kept him in the game and I was impressed with Tua he kind of struggled at the beginning of the game he wasn't throwing the ball with a lot of velocity uh, it just especially in those four possessions that I, I mentioned where they went three and out three times and he threw an interception off a tiff pass I, I was starting to lose a little confidence in the Tua project I, was, I wanted to see more and in the fourth quarter, he brought them back. He made it a game. Uh, and he lost Gusecki. Gusecki got hurt. His tight end. At the beginning of the game, Parker dropped a touchdown. Uh, Tua lobbed it pretty good. With, gave him a chance to get a touchdown. And Parker was in, unable to uh, come down with the ball. So I think the Dolphins need to... They already invested a lot of money on the defense uh, in this offseason. So that defense is legit. It, it looks strong. It's, it competed today. They got three, like I said, three interceptions on Mahomes. But now they need to focus on the offensive side. They need to give uh, Tua some more weapons so that he could really thrive and shine and fulfill his potential. Because Parker, uh, I don't know if he's a number one. Uh, he, he drops some passes that he should catch sometimes. I think he's better suited to be a number two. So if they get him a number one, a true number one wide receiver, uh, I think he could progress. He could make uh, leaps and bounds of progression. Kaseki, he's a good tight end. Fortunately, he got hurt. And they didn't have a run game all game. They really suffer. They can't get, they can't seem to run the ball. Uh, Gaskin missed the game because of COVID protocol. So they were without some weapons. But overall, good display by the Dolphins. They showed heart coming back, making it a game. And uh, the Chiefs, it's another, it's not another one of those games where it's a close game. But um, were, were the Chiefs really ever in trouble? I don't think so. Even when they were down 10-0, I didn't really think they were going to lose the game. When the Dolphins made that comeback and they made it kind of close, I never really thought that they were going to come all the way back and upset the Chiefs. The Chiefs, there's a lot of teams that they should be beating by multiple scores, double-digit scores, and they seem to just do enough to beat them. I hope they don't carry. I, I hope they don't carry this into the playoffs. Uh, I think they do have like an on and off switch that they could turn on. So I still have, they're my Super Bowl pick and the Steelers lost. So they're that number one seed in the AFC. They should get the bye. They should hold on and get the bye. They have the Saints next. And Drew Brees should be coming back, I believe. So that's going to be an interesting matchup next week. But it was a great game. Dolphins show hard. Tua showed promise, especially in the second half, especially in the fourth quarter. Um, and the Chiefs, the Chiefs are the Chiefs. They won again. At the end, the score looked closer than uh, maybe the game reflected, but that's how the Chiefs are playing their games this season. It seems like a little closer, a little too close to comfort maybe for some Chiefs fans, but they're getting the victory, and that's all that matters. So they're, they're their number one seed now. Uh, I do have them beating the Saints next week and holding on to that uh, division lead now that they have a one-game cushion on the Steelers. But great game. Tua showed some promise. I like what I saw from him in the fourth quarter. Give him more weapons, Dolphins, and we'll see how far he's able to carry you guys. Dolphins do have a tough schedule, so we'll see if they're able to hold on to that seventh seed. The Ravens are going to be right there, breathing down their necks, and the the Raiders are going to be down there too. So I do want to see the Dolphins in the playoffs. I think it'll be good to see a rookie quarterback like Tua in the playoffs. So I'm rooting for the Dolphins. Dolphins, hold on to that playoff spot. I'm rooting for you guys. And on Sunday Night Football... The Bills played the Steelers. The Steelers were coming off a Monday Night Football defeat to the uh, Washington football team. And the Bills were coming off a big victory on Monday, on the, the early Monday game against the 49ers. And at the beginning of the game, it was a very, uh, it, was a, it was a game highlighted by defense at the beginning of the game. 
there was like 10 punts in the first half, something like that. It was a lot of punts. Uh, it seems like the offense couldn't get anything going on both sides, especially for the Bills. They couldn't get anything going. They had like a field goal to show for all their efforts in the first half. And Big Ben throws a pick six and missed extra points. So they they had nine points going into the half. The Steelers don't have the offense to make up for Big Ben's mistakes. He needs to be more ball savvy. He needs to take care of the ball better because if he throws a pick six and he threw another pick uh, later in the game when he was trying to bring them back, that offense is not potent enough to come back from. They're struggling to score points just as it is, and it's even harder if they're giving up points while they're on the field. No pick sixes, no formal returns for touchdowns, and Big Ben just needs to take better care of the football. But for the Bills, they cement themselves as a true contender, as a true contender in the AFC. Uh, I think they're the second best team in the AFC behind the Steelers. I mean, behind the Chiefs, they're a better team than the Steelers. I thought the Steelers were kind of fluky 11-0. and Now they lost two games in a row. We'll see how they finish the season. But now they have the Browns breathing down their necks. We'll see how the Browns do on Monday Night Football. But the Steelers, they might be pretenders. I, I don't know if they make the playoffs. It doesn't look like they're going to they're gonna have a bye week now because the Chiefs are ahead of them. Uh, depending on the matchup in the first round, I could see them just getting eliminated in the first round. Their defense is getting beat up. I don't trust Big Ben at this stage in his career. Uh, I I don't trust him to be able to push the ball down the field. The wide receivers are dropping a lot of balls again. Steelers might be in a little bit of a mess right now. 11-0, a lot of people said it was kind of fluky. The schedule was soft. We're starting to see the real Steelers right now. Two games in a row. Two losses in a row, losing to the Washington football team, losing to the Bills on Sunday Night Football. And for the Bills, they have two primetime games back-to-back. Monday night victory against the 49ers, Sunday night victory against the Steelers. And I think it was it was like one more time, it was the Josh Allen to Stephon Diggs show. Stephon Diggs is balling out. Uh, the Bills, both the Bills and the Vikings won that trade. The Bills got Stephon Diggs, a bona fide number one, a real weapon that Josh Allen can trust. And the Vikings were able to draft Justin Jefferson and replace Stephon Diggs with a cheaper contract, younger talent. But I think both both teams are winners, but I think the I think the Bills are just a little bit more of winners. Vikings by no means they didn't get a bad end, but if the Bills don't make that trade, I don't think Josh Allen makes that the leap that he's made this year. And he's really looks he really looks like a franchise quarterback now. Instead of last year, he was still making a lot of mistakes, and and they were highlighting how he's fixing his mechanics. He's he's using the right like form. He's using his hips. The shoulders are all aligned correctly, and all all that stuff makes sense. But if you don't have a number one right receiver like Stephon Diggs, I don't think he makes the jump that he's made this year. And Stephon Diggs has balled out. He's justified trading a first round pick for him. He he has amazing footwork. He has he's. Probably the best route runner in the NFL. Him, Devontae Adams, and uh, Keenan Allen could all duke it out for the who, who runs the crispiest, cleanest route. But he put on a show on Monday Night Football, getting lost from um, Sherman and Verrett, and now he put on another show against the Steelers. He, he, sometimes he has like five, six yards of separation. He runs such crispy routes. The Dolphins look really good, especially in the second half. And I'm a Dolphin believer now. They're, they should win the, their division now. They have a two-game lead against the Dolphins. And I think that will make some noise in the playoffs. I could see them definitely getting to the AFC Championship and giving the Chiefs their run for their money. Uh, Josh Allen against Patrick Mahomes, that would be a sight to see in the playoffs. Two big quarterbacks that extend the play, that have rocket arms. Uh, that pregame warm-up which would be something to see if, if they're both throwing like bombs down the field. I really like the Bills. The Bills are building something... Uh, they're building a nice squad. Their defense is starting to pick it up too. So I really like the Bills. I really like what I saw from them. I think they're for real. Josh Allen just keeps making strides. It seems like every game he's he's able to pick up blitzes. He's able to analyze defenses. I like what I see from the Bills. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. <laughs> but yeah, the Bills, another primetime win. Uh, I'm glad that national audience is able to see the Bills. They deserve... After being kind of irrelevant for the latter part of like the last 15 years, 20 years, it's, it's good to see them back as uh, contenders, as an entertaining team. I know the Bills have one of the most diehard fans 
in Buffalo in the NFL. They have crazy fans. They do crazy stuff in their in their pregame and their tailgates. So I think they deserve it. Good for Buffalo. Good for the Bills. It's good for the NFL to have that fan base back. I know they they always talk about their stadium, how it's one of the loudest, it's one of the best home field advantages. So shout out to the Bills. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the team as a new as a neutral um, fan of the NFL. I, I like what I see from the Bills. I'm a believer. And I'm excited to see them in the playoffs. And if the Steelers keep slipping up, the Bills might take that number two seed. Doesn't really matter because they won't get a bye, but they will they will get the weakest, uh, the lowest seed in the wild card round, which should be the Dolphins or the Raiders or the Ravens. So we'll see who who gets that last playoff spot. But the Bills are looking nice. I I kinda I'm kinda rooting for a, a Bills Chiefs AFC championship game. I think that would be real entertaining seeing Josh Allen going up against Patrick Mahomes. And just some other highlights for week 14 of the NFL. Uh Rams beat the Patriots on Thursday night football 24 to 3. Titans beat the Jaguars 31-10. Um Derrick Henry goes over 200 yards again. He's a beast. Uh Broncos hold on against the Panthers 32-27. Bears 36, Texans 7. That surprised me. Trubisky's actually playing pretty decent the last two games. We'll see how that plays out. Cardinals beat the Giants 26-7. They claim that seventh playoff spot, the last wild card spot in the NFC again. We'll see if they're able to hold on. They should be able to hold on. They have the easier schedule. Cowboys beat the Bengals 30-7. Andy Dalton uh, goes back. Um, gets a little revenge against Cincinnati. Uh, Seahawks beat the Jets 40-3. to uh, That was never really a game. Seahawks take care of business. Packers 31, Lions 4-24. Uh, Aaron Rodgers to Devontae Adams might be the best connection in the NFL. Packers get the number one seed in the NFC. Chargers 20, Falcons 17. Both teams were trying to throw the game away at the end. Uh, it was pretty funny to see both teams living up to their... Uh, to their billing, living up to their stereotypes, throwing games away at the end. Chargers in the end get a field goal to win the game. Washington 23, 49ers 15. Washington uh, gets first place in the NFC East. It looks like they should be able to hold on. They do look like the best team in the NFC East. That defense is legit. Uh, hopefully for them, Alex Smith is healthy because if Dwayne Haskins is their starting quarterback, he might throw their season away. Eagles get the upset against the Saints. Uh, Jalen Hurts looked good, looked solid, and uh, Taysom Hill wasn't able to bring the Saints back. The Saints must be pretty excited to have uh, Drew Brees back. Taysom Hill was a nice little little run, but I think uh, we all know that the Saints are pretty excited to have Drew Brees back. And tomorrow, Ravens versus Browns, uh, a lot of playoff implication in that game should be a good game. But that was it for the NFL content. Uh, switching over to the Premier League. Everton versus Chelsea, one of the upsets of the week. Uh, I did not see this coming. Chelsea came in firing. They hadn't lost a game in 17 matches in all competitions. Everton, after their hot start, was really not playing uh, at all good. They, they had won one game out of their last seven games, I believe. And they are able to squeak out the 1-0 victory against Chelsea. Mendy, for all the great play he's had since he came over to Chelsea, had a mistake this game. He, he gave a penalty away. I think he was pressing a little bit just because a couple of minutes before the penalty, before his mistake that led to the penalty, he got hurt. He went up for a ball and he fell kind of awkwardly. And then the medical team had to come and give him some treatment. Um, and I think after the event, after that, he was pressing. He was trying to show that he was good. Uh, the ball, uh, Calvert Lewin won a ball, won a header, and then he chased after it. And it was at the very outside of the box or like the very end of the box. And Mendy committed to going to get the ball. He didn't get there fast enough, tackled Calvert-Lewis, Calvert-Lewin. Easy penalty call. And then Sigurdsson put it away calmly. And then after that, Chelsea Chelsea was chasing the 1-0, the 1-0, goal, the 1-0 defeat, uh, the 1-0 deficit. And Everton just looked comfortable sitting back. Uh, they conceded all the possessions to Chelsea, 72% possession for Chelsea in the game but Chelsea never really looked dangerous they were without Pulisic they were without uh, Hudson-Odoi they were without Cisage 
So they were basically without all their wingers. They had to play uh, Havertz up there, and they had to play Werner on the left side. And they're just not natural wingers. They, they don't present that threat. They're not as quick as their natural wingers. Werner's quick, but he's more of a number nine. Havertz, what's going on with Havertz? He seems to be a letdown, too. They spent a lot of money to get him, and we're like a third through the season, and he has one goal and one assist combined. And we need to see more from Havertz. I think Chelsea fans need to be demand more from Havertz. He has a lot of talent, but he has not showed up so far in his first season in Chelsea. And for Everton, good win. They're able to they're able to squeak out the victory. Uh, Chelsea had some chances in the second half. They hit the post three times in the game. Uh, Pickford had a couple saves, but really Chelsea didn't look too dangerous. They were definitely missing their wingers, but I I did expect them to see the game out to come back, but they never really looked dangerous. They had a couple chances, but nothing crazy. I think Lampard was trying to lower the expectations for their game, for their team after the after the game in his post match interview. He was saying how like um, this game kind of shows that Chelsea is not a title contender. I don't. He doesn't understand why people keep asking him if they're title contenders. There's teams out there that have uh, more longevity. They have they have players in their squads that have won leagues, cups, Champions League games, or Champions League titles, and they have some. They have some in their team that have done the same, but they're a very young team, and it's it's crazy to put those expectations on on his team when they're so young and they're barely coming together. And I see what he's trying to do. He's trying to lower expectations. Just in case the team doesn't do good, he could just say, hey, you know what? I've been saying it since the beginning, or I said it earlier, that this team is not a title contender, that it's a work in progress. He even said, like, talk to me in two, three years when maybe we've won some Cubs, we've won league. Then if you ask me if we're title contenders, then I'll say, all right, we're title contenders. I get what he's doing. Mourinho kind of did the same thing uh, a couple of weeks back when they asked him if, if there were a title a title contender, if there were a horse in the race. And he said, oh, we're not horses, we're ponies. Like, we're not even a horse, we're a pony. We're not really, like, a favorite. We're not really contenders. It's in the same it's in the same idea what Lampard is doing. He's trying to lower expectations. He's trying to put less pressure on his team. I get it. It makes sense. But for all the money that Chelsea spend, for if you look at their roster top to bottom, they are definitely, they should definitely be title contenders this season. Uh, and he needs to make it work. Uh, there's one statistic that I wanted to point out. Real quick, uh, Chelsea's six wins this season have come against eighth, 18th place Burnley, 14th place Leeds, 20th place Sheffield United, 11th place Newcastle, 13th place Crystal Palace, 16th place Brighton. And Chelsea versus the top 10 teams in the table, zero wins, three draws, two losses. So was it a fluky run that they went on uh, that they just ended right now with their loss? We're, we're going to find out. We'll see how they do, but... Chelsea, Lampard has to do a better job against the top of the table teams. But I guess you can't they they couldn't keep their streak going. It was 17 games unbeaten. So we'll see how they bounce back. They play the Wolves in the middle of the week. And the Wolves are struggling right now too. My Wolves are struggling right now. So we're, we're we'll see if they're able to turn it around. And once they get their wingers back, once they get Pulisic, Hudson Adoy, and Cizic, uh, I think they should be in, in a better position. So it, it sucks for Chelsea that they lost, but I I still believe that they have the team, they have the squad to have a top four finish and compete for the title. And as far as Everton, they stopped their skid. They were falling down that table rapidly. Big, big win without James, without Digne. They're able to get the victory. So shout out to Ancelotti. He got the win. They defended pretty good in the second half to hold that 1-0 victory. And now they're able to breathe they're, I think they're in seventh now, so we'll see how Everton finishes the season. We might look back at this game and and see that, and this is where they save their season. This is where they turn it back around. But we'll see how they do. Uh, I I do want Everton to do pretty good. I, I, they're one of those teams that, as a neutral, I could kind of root for. So we'll see how they end. But Everton pulls up the upset in match day twelve against Chelsea, and we'll see how Chelsea bounces bounces back against Wolves on Tuesday.